likes me to make something. Yes. I always like to make styling gel. Hold that, please. Okay, in your right hand. Thank you. You do that so well. Now remember, everybody can, has to see it. Are you right here? You, you can stir, right? You put it here. Okay, yes. Good. The main ingredient of styling gel is water, of which I got right out of the city faucet. So I'm using the finest. Okay. <laughs> That's a little more than half. Yeah, well, it's close enough. Now everybody uses one ingredient. Um, it's called carbapole. Everybody uses the same thing. Uh, there is no other way to make it. When the first guy, B.F. Goodrich, invented the product, uh, he knocked on Grandpa's door and we made, uh, made styling gel in, in 1950, us and Dippity Doo. And it has this white powder that looks like cocaine. It's not poisonous. <laughs> so I don't travel on airplanes with it because, you know, everybody thinks I'm doing something illegal. Okay. Oh, here. Stir. And as Yolanda stirs it, we dissolve this in water. I have five tanks at home. And uh, we dissolve this uh, stuff as she does. And we have electric mixers is what she's doing by hand. And then we have to pick a color that we want to make our styling gel. Blue gel was popular. I make it clear. I make it black. I make it pink. I make it yellow. I make it purple for Johnny B, if anyone's ever heard of that brand. Um, you name it, I've got 27 different companies that I make gel for. And you guys buy it at whatever price you think is good. It costs me 14 cents a pound to make gel. So don't get crazy on how much you spend on gel. It's just carbapole, which thickens water, and a little bit of resin to make it good. Some perfume that you guys get high on, and I pick a color, any color. Today, because I brought blue, excuse me, Yolanda, I'm going to make blue gel, of which that's what it looks like. Now, all that doesn't do a darn thing to make anybody excited until, like, the lady with the pH question, until we adjust pH. Because in shampoo, or in soap, as I mentioned, um, you don't do anything until you adjust the pH of the soap or the shampoo. Is it alkali? Is it uh, acidic or whatever? The same thing happens in chemistry. And I'm using a product called triethanolamine. You'll see it just about on every label of gel out there. And the only reason we put it in, it gives a little slip to the product, but it also has an alkali. And it has a pH of about 12. But since I use so little, okay, a few of you. Al, I've known since he was seven years old. His mother had CNC Beauty Supply in Pico Rivera on, uh, on Slauson. Nice guy. When he finally got out of high school, he wanted his own beauty supply. Bought Atlas Wholesaling. And uh, I was the only guy to give him credit. Startup kid. Nice guy. And uh, he basically uh, figured, I'm going to buy gel. So he bought my gel. We made it purple for him. One of his sales guys, a sharp man, John was just, he was a barber and, and uh, he'd worked the barbering trade three, four days and sell for Al. And he got into a dispute about how much money he was going to make and he needed a better commission and wanted to make more money. And John came into my factory and said, well, if you're making gel for him, make gel for me. I can sell it. I'm his number one salesman. And I didn't want to hurt Al's feelings, so I wouldn't sell to him. So he went to another competitor of mine to make gel. Well, the guy didn't know how to do what I just did. And he made gel, and he didn't realize to keep it clear, which what people value, I'm just going to put the perfume in without a solubilizer. And the first thing it did was it turned really, really cloudy. And it became pasty because he added so much. Flakes. Is the powder that you put in the gel chemical or organic? It is not organic. It is chemical. <laughs> comes from B.F. Goodrich, the tire company, who made vulcanized rubber. It is chemical. It's a polyacrylate, which means that it takes the hydrogen and oxygen molecule in water and links them. So they look like a big chain, and that's how you make the paste. Question? Do you make mousse, too? Um, no, and I'll tell you why. Oh, absolutely. Mousse is a product that people have. Now, we use the same resin. I didn't add a resin, which is the question, which gives you a little more hold if I need to bump it up. I can add some resin to it uh, with the perfume. But if I'm making a mousse, you've seen them, you know, it comes out like shaving foam or those pumpers. Those pumpers came out about 11, 12 years ago from air spray in Florida, and they were trying to figure out what to do with them. The only way air spray foamers work is 2% bubble bath in water and then add resin. 
what else makes the foam? So you're adding bubble bath to your hair, which is why they never really, really caught on, because what do you do with the bubble bath you apply to your hair? It coats the hair, build up, burn out, and you got to wash it off and get a clarifier to get it off. But everybody's tried, I've never tried because I thought it was stupid to begin with. But you put it in a foamer, put it on your hair, add a resin, perfume, and then try to market it to you, and you put this foamer on your hair with maybe some silicone for feel, and you still got to get rid of the, the bubble bath, and it's coated your hair. Normally, you'd want to wash it out of the hair. I have no idea why people still buy it, but it's bubbles. The delivery system on this is pure water. The delivery on this is water with bubble bath. I go with the gel if you want a quick hold. Mm -hmm. That makes sense because bubble bath yeah. is sticky. Bubble your hair yeah. sticky. Now, in case anybody, here's the million dollar trick. I like the Morton brand. I know there's Leslie. This is the commercial. In case you guys ever run out of gel and you want your spray gel, Grab some salt. Works with mine, any other brand, you name it. I don't care whose it is, this works the same way. You want to put that in a sprayer because it's too thick to go in a sprayer. You're going to pay a lot of money for this. Uh, okay, you want to stir away. It reverts back into a sprayable type medium. Now you can put it in your sprayer. Everything that was in the gel before now becomes a spray gel and you stick it in a bottle and don't run over to Sally's when you have a client in the store and you go, I ran out of spray gel, what am I going to do? Put a little of this, put in your sprayer, spray it on people's hair and life will be good. Thank you, Lama. Give her a hand, give her a hand. My hour and almost a half question. I question for me. I want to make gel at home. Yes. Where can I get the powder? Um, you, no, no, no. You'd have to go to a company called Chemtech. They're on um, DeSoto, up uh, uh, next door to the Wella Company. Uh, and you would walk in and say, I'd like to buy a box of this. It costs you $7 a pound. Because you can, yeah, you can buy the brand you like.